All right, just before we start, I've got to address the elephant in the room. I know what you're all thinking, and the answer is no. I haven't seen Chernobyl, all right? So I don't want to hear any more questions about that. I'll watch this show when I'm ready! However, every now and then I get a message from some second year engineering student contending, lol, you should really do your research. Mmm, someone accusing you of not doing your research. A classic tell that they've done fuck all research. Greenpeace are retards. They oppose nuclear energy, which is actually 100% segafe. Guess what, libtards? Wind doesn't always blow. Cry laugh emoji. How solipsistic do you have to be to think, well, the wind's not blowing where I'm currently standing. I can only assume it no longer exists. I'm pretty sure the wind is always blowing is so self-evident that it's a fucking Buddhist quote. What? You think you're more wise than this cunt? Furthermore, factually, it is always blowing. Plus it's cheaper. Plus it's more reliable. Plus, I don't recall seeing any Netflix docos on huge wind turbine accidents. Nor do I recall reading about parts of the world that are permanently uninhabitable due to a solar farm meltdown. Nonetheless, I took your advice. I did do my research and let me just say, Never ask me to do anything ever again, okay? I'm a busy man, I've got a lot of Warhammer to paint, which by the way, if this video doesn't get at least 15,000 likes, I'm not releasing the next instalment. Ooh, e-blackmail. I can hear all the neckbeards now going, I thought you collected chow, not chaos. You're mean. Well, you know what else is mean? Nuclear energy. And the people have a right to know that if you don't want to have octopus babies, that as soon as they're born, they rip your tit off and go, Yay, milk! I killed the golden geese! Maybe you should heed nuclear energy's own international symbol and stay clear. Look at this segment on Sky News, which for ages I thought was called The Scream Wearing a Wig Tonight. But now it's called Credlin. And isn't that the perfect name for that woman? It's almost onomatopoeic. Credlin! These headphones are funny. Someone who is trained, though, on mining emissions and other issues about energy is the former head of Western Mining, Trevor St. Barker. He had this to say. Have a listen. The reality is that there's nothing political about energy. People talk about renewables and they talk about greenhouse abatement, but the rest of the world um, is not using sun and wind to do that. It, it, it has baseload hydro, Correct. it has nuclear. Okay, so, not taking for gospel a crackly voice with Alan Jones interjecting every two seconds going... <laughs> Correct. I looked it up, my suspicions were instantly confirmed. The rest of the world is using sun and wind. Wow, who'd have guessed that the former CEO of a mining company that owned 33% of the world's uranium reserves would have an ulterior motive for pushing nuclear energy? Um, we don't have either of these no. things. We have expensive, expensive gas. Justin, so, so we're having a debate uh certainly with some coalition MPs. Now look at what this waste of space has to say on the screen. The comic within me was screaming, no man, lead with your best material. And then after watching the entire segment, I realised, oh no, that actually is his best material, he's just shit. About yeah. lifting Australia's prohibition on nuclear. Now Keith Pitt, an uh, electrical engineer, a backbencher who's really pushing this hard, and others, uh, he says he's not advocating a nuclear power industry for Australia. He says we just have got to have the debate. We, we've oh, got to absolutely. allow the conversation. Couldn't agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. I think we've got to... If it didn't have the word nuclear in front of it and it was called something else and we didn't have Nagasaki and, and Hiroshima, I think... Uh, or the Cuban Missile Crisis, I think we would already have it. What did I tell you? As safe an argument as nuclear energy itself. If the thing I like was an unimaginably catastrophic, it'd have a better rap. I think another reason we don't have it is after Fukushima, Thomas Rose and Trevor Sweeting estimated that by our calculations, the overall probability of a core melt accident in the next decade in a world with 443 reactors is almost 70%. That's worse than a coin flip. If you transferred the danger of nuclear energy into a coin and went, Yay, heads! We avoided a generation of kids who look like they belong in a freak show this time! That would be a 20% improvement on reality. And even then, not even. The International Atomic Energy Agency doesn't disclose all the nuclear accidents that occur. So actually, the probability of an accident is much higher than that. Hmm. An agency in control of the material that caused Fukushima purposefully hiding statistics. Well, if I may bounce back the logic that Sky News panelists used to defend data retention laws. If you got nothing to hide, what are you scared of? Hey? It's sort of a dirty word. And look, it's not perfect, 
But, talking about science not being settled, nothing is perfect. I, I think that uh, we haven't explored it anywhere near enough. I mean, there's some... Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, look, we, look at those two we, examples, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japan had the bomb dropped on them, the nuclear yeah. bomb dropped on them. They have nuclear power. Yeah. Yeah, they went through two nuclear bombings and Fukushima, still coming back for more. Toughen up Australia, you bunch of buttercups. Sky News! France has nuclear, Germany has nuclear, the Br Britain has nuclear yeah. power. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Isn't it comforting to know that she was once the de facto Prime Minister of this country despite not knowing anything? Germany's phasing nuclear power out within the next three years. Japan's decommissioning it as we speak, as is France. The UK had two major nuclear projects flounder in the last two years alone. So excellent examples, Credlin. Abject failures. I suppose that is your cup of tea though, isn't it? When Europe crows about its performance in global emission standards, mm. it doesn't tell people that most of the heavy lifting is done by nuclear. When you look at Sky News hosts, you see a lot of grey hair and you think, surely they're an adult. But in their mind, they look at their grey hair and think, ooh, I must be a withered. They think whatever they say becomes reality. Look at the data. The heavy lifting in the EU is done by solar and wind. Furthermore, if you just want to have a debate, if you just want all the facts laid out on the table, fine. Here's the fact. If all aging reactors online today worldwide were replaced by 2050, so that's 400 nuclear reactors that would need to be replaced between 2018 and 2050, which means we're already behind schedule, guys. Chop, chop. You know what it'd take for nuclear energy to meet 70% of global energy demand by 2050? A new nuclear reactor being built and put online every single day. Day. So do we really need to have the debate? According to Credlin, yes. And the reason that I like exploring the idea of nuclear is because we can keep those emissions down. I think if we can have grown-up conversations about the sexual abuse, historical sexual abuse of children in organisational institutions, if we can have those sorts of grown-up conversations as a country, surely to God we can talk about nuclear energy. Yeah, but you've just proven you can't, Credlin. There would have been less agreement if you just filmed three bobbleheads for that segment. You said absolutely nothing that even remotely resembles substance and... Oh, that's right, I forgot you're on Sky News. So why the big push? This article in Renew Economy explains it well. Nuclear energy is being just debated at this point as a propaganda tool because it's impractical and they know it. Therefore, it doesn't pose a threat to fossil fuels and it's just a time delay tactic for the inevitable transition to a green economy. They might as well be arguing, should we replace coal plants with millions of guinea pigs on wheels? This pet shop owner says yes. This hairless guinea pig thinks it's not that simple. I'm not a hairless guinea pig, I'm George Columbaris. No one in the world can tell the difference, mate. <laughs> So to all these men of science smugly deriding Greenpeace for being opposed to nuclear energy, might I be the first to say congratulations. Einstein would be very proud of your ability to regurgitate information that you didn't even bother to look for. It was just boop, popped into your head as part of a marketing campaign and yay, that's what I think. Why do you like Colgate? Four out of five dentists recommended. Men of science. I know you think you're being very intellectual for spouting Minerals Council talking points, but you sound an awful lot like Peter Credlin. Cool. Also, while my thumbs are up, press the like button, do this to the video, and make sure you're just as smug as those nuclear nerds by going, mm, I also got my information from one YouTube video. <laughs> also, come see my show. Also, due to popular demand, more shows added for Adelaide, and this time, if you buy them, I'll actually end up going. Please share and comment below. Command.